Bless you, House of Praise family. Pastor Steve here for another time together to study the Bible. And we're excited about it. And I trust that you all are well. Welcome to our House of Praise family and also to our YouTube and, and um, uh, Facebook family. And whoever may be watching this video, we're in an outdoor setting here again today. We're trying to get as many as we can in before the winter sets in and and it's just so beautiful out here and the foliage has been absolutely incredible this year and the blue sky and the cool breezes and i'm just so anxious to share some good things that god has given us here um, in the word of god this thanksgiving season the lord has burdened my heart to set up a theme and this is our theme in our church this year uh, it's Revelations 12, 11, where it says in the word of God, and they overcame him, that's referring to the enemy, the enemy of God, the enemy of Jesus, and the enemy of your soul as well. Uh, the devil, Satan, call him whatever you would like. Uh, it's all biblical, and uh, we need to understand that we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know, this is Thanksgiving time. We should be praising God. We should be thanking God for all that he has done and making sure that we're telling others. Make sure, I tell you, this morning I had an opportunity. I was in a, a meeting with other pastors and, and I just had an opportunity to start sharing what God is doing in some of the members of our church family. And it was a great opportunity to really share some good things. Every opportunity you get, you need to make sure that you're sharing what God is doing, what he has done, and uh, get as many PTLs in there as you can. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that is our Thanksgiving uh, theme this year. Let's, let's do it again. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. So that's what we want to focus on here uh, today. And um, uh, let's pray first and ask God to really open up the word of God and may we be enlightened and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Lord God, open up our hearts. Open up my heart, oh God. Touch everyone who is watching this video and may these be a few moments of encouragement and strength. And may we hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, we've been talking about the power, the miraculous power of Holy Communion over the last week or so. And um, last week we had a tremendous study and, and I'm sure maybe you've had chance to watch that uh, YouTube video on the miraculous power of the communion. And we focused on the cup of blessing, revelation in the cup of blessing. Today, the Lord has told us to focus on the miraculous power in the communion and the subtitle, Embracing the Power. Embracing the Power. You know, in 2 Timothy 3, 5, the Apostle Paul mentions uh, about a lot of good things in that chapter, but this is one thing I want to just focus on, is a, a form of godliness, and this can happen to many Christians, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You know, the power of God is is ours to be blessed with. I believe God wants to do so much for us. He wants to extend his mighty power. We've been singing that wonderful song over the last couple of years, you know, talking about a miracle worker and a promise keeper, a light in the darkness, the way maker. My, I mean, it's such a powerful song and we sing it and we enjoy it. It's such a blessing. And uh, even when we can't see him, he's working. Even when we don't hear him, he's working. It doesn't matter whether we see or feel him. That's not really what it's all about. We just know that the, by the promises of God in his word, he is working in our behalf. So we don't want to be in this group where the Apostle Paul was talking about in 2 Timothy 3, 5, a form of godliness, but denying the power. That's for sure. We want to embrace the power. Some actually deny the power, but others don't even 
I, I'm not sure that they're aware of the power. Amen. Sometimes you, you hear people talk and you say, wow, they're not even aware of what's available to them. Amen. And we want to focus on that today. That's for sure. We want to look at this a little bit closer. God has given me a few examples, which I'm going to go through quickly because I want to get into other parts of Scripture. But here's some examples that God has given us. You know, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, without a doubt. It's the Holy Spirit that provides the power. Amen. So it's not my body, even though it's as holy as it is. Without the Holy Spirit, I'm still nothing. I can't do anything. I can't obey. I can't uh, be successful. There's nothing I can do without him. Okay. Without Christ, I can do nothing. Amen. So our body is the temple, but the Holy Spirit provides the power. Amen. The Lord showed me this. It's kind of like our car. You know, we got have a beautiful car and uh, the Lord wants us to have a nice, safe vehicle to drive around in them. And uh, thank God for that. But without gasoline, we have no power. <laughs> we have no power without gasoline, right? Amen. So the car can be beautiful, but it's useless without gasoline. Just like our body needs the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, healthy food and exercise is a godly thing, without a doubt. And, and it's right. We should take care of our bodies, and, and it's really important. But it is not by might or power within ourselves, but it is only, once again, by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be successful. You know, the Lord is, gives us a lot of examples, like the laying on of hands. That's really important. But, you know, when it comes to the laying on of hands, that's a transfer of anointing. That's a beautiful thing. Very biblical and talked about in the Bible quite a bit. But it's by his stripes that we are healed. Amen. So if I don't have faith in the cross and faith in the blood of Christ, I can lay hands all day and nothing, nothing would happen. Amen. So the laying on of hands is biblical. It's a biblical action and we should do it. But it's by his stripes that we are healed. It's the same way with anointing oil. Anointing with oil is biblical action without a doubt, but it's by his stripes that we are healed. Amen. There's no power in the oil and the olive oil that you anoint somebody with. Very biblical. The oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, but it's by his stripes that we are healed. Amen. And that's really important. Under It's like the water baptism. We're not saved by water. Okay, the water doesn't save us. It's a biblical form. It's something that Jesus did and set the example. It's an example of what happens after we receive Christ and are born again. We die to the old and rise to the new. Amen. It's a sanctification of the body, soul, and spirit. But actual salvation really comes by faith in the cross. Amen. Faith in what Christ did faith in the cross of Christ. Amen. And uh, another example would be the tithe. Okay. The tithe is a beautiful thing and it's a biblical obedience, but the honor to God in bringing the first fruits. Okay. That's where the glory of God is released. There's a release of the covenant blessing, the covenant blessing. Amen. And we're under a covenant blessing when we bring a tithe to the Lord. It's just such a beautiful thing. And that's where the power lies is when we give of the first fruit willingly and of a willing heart. And uh, it, it's the same way with the Holy Communion. The bread and the cup is Jesus's design. He designed it. He's the one that established it. And when they were celebrating Passover on that Thursday night, the night before the great passion of the Christ and uh, so the bread and the cup is, was Jesus' design. It was his idea. He instituted the Last Supper, if you will, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. And the power, though, is in his body and the blood, okay? It's in his body and the blood, his broken body, which was broken for you and I so that our body could be made whole, and his blood, which was shed for the whole world so that I can be forgiven from sins in the past, present, and future. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen. This is so very important. So it's obvious to me in Scripture we need both. God works his power through the form, if you will. It's his design. Amen. So it's important that we understand that as we go forward. So why does the Holy Communion have so much power? Why does it represent? Because it's a super 
natural. It's supernatural, something that Christ himself instituted and said, this is what you will do to remember me till I come again. And the glory and the power of his broken body and his shed blood is what we celebrate. Amen. First of all, it's a fulfillment of ancient prophecy. I believe that we've got to keep in mind when we <clears throat> when we are partaking of Holy Communion, it's all, it's all based in the grace of God. It's all based on the righteousness of God, which is established in heaven for us. Amen. Let's read out of Jeremiah. And this is a really important scripture. Uh, uh, Woe be unto pastors that destroy, scatter the sheep of my pastures, saith the Lord. And there, there's a warning there, of course. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries and whither I have driven them and I will bring them again to their folds. It was referring to the nation of Israel, bringing them back together to their homeland. Amen. And I believe it refers to the church as well. God wants to bring the church body together and uh, God has always had a people. Amen. And today I know he has great regard for the nation of Israel and, uh, and that will be till the end of time. That's something that God established. But of course, the Lord wants us to, as the church body, to come together. And that's where he wants to show and display his power. Amen. Through the great mysterion, the church of Jesus Christ. And it says here in this prophecy that we, they shall be fruitful and increase. Now, there's a promise for you. There's a prophecy for you. God is promising that you will be fruitful and that you will increase. Amen. Now, you've got to receive that. That's very important. And that applies to all those who believe. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor shall they be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Amen. That is powerful. Behold, the days will come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Branches with a capital B. That's referring to Jesus Christ, amen. And a king shall reign, prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Boy, I'm so excited about this because this work is already done and it's completed. We're talking about celebrating the Holy Communion. And, and why do we celebrate it? Because it's such an established thing that God has already done. We're talking about his grace and his righteousness is already established in heaven. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Amen. <laughs> that is so beautiful. And that really excites me. If it's his righteousness, okay, then we don't, we can't lose it. Amen. It, it's secure. And, and our righteousness, if you will, is in him. It's in heaven. Such a beautiful thing. <laughs> That's why we celebrate the Holy Communion with such confidence. Amen. Regardless of our fluctuating emotions, a lot of things happen in our lives. We kind of go up and down sometimes, a little bit of a roller coaster in our lives. And we all go through that. Regardless of spiritual growth factors, too. It depends on where we are. There's a lot of things that um, affect I know how our relationship with God is established and, and moves forward. But he is my righteousness. Amen. And I am secure in him. Jehovah said canoe. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, may you reveal this to all of us today that our righteousness is secure in Christ. Amen. And that's why. We celebrate Holy Communion the way we do, and that's what it represents. Amen. Re religion has a way of really messing up our head. I mean, we can really get mixed up in a lot of different things, even doctrines and denominations and different things. And well, I'll tell you, God just looks at, excuse me, God just looks at the heart. Make sure that you know that and keep that in mind at all times. Our favor with God has nothing to do with what I do or what we do. It's only relevant to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So rest, it's beautiful. What do you see where we're going with this? This is so beautiful. The message of grace, 
the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel, the message of the Holy Communion is, this is so important to see it, is rest. It's rest. It's so beautiful. Amen. I, I, I am just so excited about sharing this because this has such a powerful impact on the church and a powerful impact on our families, even our businesses and finances, everything. It changes your perspective of life. It's what it does. Amen. The Hebrew word for healing, uh, we know this word, it's rafa, okay, it's rafa, and uh, which simply means to relax, that's what it means, amen. And uh, as we relax or rest in him, it promotes healing, without a doubt, and there's no question about that. The gospel of grace is not a new idea, guys. This is something that God has established right from the very beginning. And it was expressed through Messiah like we have never, ever seen it in our lives. Amen. I mean, it was just so beautiful. It is the root of the gospel. It is the message. I've often put it this way, that the message of the cross is, is not just uh, an event in history. It was the event in history. Amen. <laughs> I mean, it's, when you think of the message of the cross, everything, we wouldn't even have a resurrection without the cross. I mean, it was the, it, the, the day, we, we call it Good Friday, but the day that Christ died on the cross, that was the day that death died. Amen. That was the day that death died. Amen. That is so beautiful. That is why this Christian ordinance of the Holy Communion is so precious, amen? It is so precious to us. Grace tears down barriers. Oh boy, I'll tell you. The grace of God just tears down barriers. It removes fear. It takes away anxieties. It removes loneliness. The other day, Carol was ministering to someone on the phone and and uh, this other person was so brokenhearted and crying and and it was it was quite an emotional ministry time for Carol on the phone with this person. And, uh, you know, we've got to learn that we can come to God as Abba. That's Daddy Father, Daddy God. Amen? We can climb up on His lap and allow Him to put His arms around you. It's so precious. I don't know how to express this. God has called me uh, to be a pastor teacher. I mean, that's what God's calling is on my life. And, oh, I, sometimes I'll prophesy and sometimes I have apostolic anointing and different things. And But my primary call is not as an evangelist, but as a one who administers discipleship. God has called me to be a teacher, to be a pastor to be with someone in their time of need, to cry with somebody who was crying, to laugh with somebody who was laughing, amen. To be there when somebody really needs somebody just to lay their head on their shoulders. <laughs> That's what God has called Carol and I to do. And, and the Lord has directed me to stay in that, that track to stay in, in where God has called us to be at this season of our life. Amen. You understand that, that life is, is full of different seasons. In fact, God has showed Carol and I that we're moving into a, a new season now. And there's some beautiful things that God has in store for us. And the enemy's trying to steal it, trying to cause confusion. Oh, yeah. Just be very, very careful. Listen for the voice of the Lord, and he will show you what your new season is, too. Amen. You know, we can come to him as Abba. I just want to emphasize that. Daddy, Father. Amen. That is why the Holy Communion is so precious to us, because it represents this type of relationship. And I, I just want to quote this right now that uh, Romans 8, 1 says, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ. None. Now keep that in mind as we go forward here. This is really important. We're talking today about the miraculous power of the Holy Communion. Embracing 
the power, embracing the power. Remember I mentioned back in, in, uh, in uh, what, 2 Timothy 3, 5, where it says the Apostle Paul mentions that some have a form of godliness, but deny the power. The Lord has showed me this, and it's kind of grieved my heart that many can trust God for salvation, but they have a hard time trusting him for healing. They have faith for salvation, but not faith for healing. And there's a great emphasis on healing in our church right now because of the amount of sickness that we have experienced over the last, actually, couple years, especially the last year and a half in particular. I mean, it's it's really been um, quite an experience where we've had to trust God at so many levels and a lot of difficulties and and uh, but the Lord is getting us through. But it's been a real challenge. Amen. And uh, we need to see Jesus again. That's what's important. Amen. You know, Jesus never ministered healing based on performance. He never looked at a group and said, "All right, well." You know, you over here, you, you guys have memorized the Torah, so I'm going to heal you first. Or you guys are good over here, or you give a lot of money into the synagogue, so I'm going to heal you first. Now, now he, he, that was never a criteria that Jesus based his healing and ministry on. It was never based on performance. Everything relies on the grace, the, the unmerited favor of God. And that's what the Holy Communion speaks to us about. Amen. And this is so important to understand this. This is so crucial. Acts 20 and 7, and upon the first day of the week, this is the Apostle Paul now uh, speaking, when the disciples came together to break bread. You know, the love feast was a huge part of the early church. They came together daily to take communion, let's say. Amen. We have a, a method of taking communion. We little cups with grape juice or wine or whatever. We use grape juice in our church, but whatever. And uh, uh, it's and, and broken, you know, maybe matzah crackers or whatever it may be, pita bread, whatever your church uses. But it doesn't have to be in that form. You can be having dinner with your wife and have communion. Amen. We're going to sit down together tonight. Carol is preparing a beautiful chicken dinner, I believe, and, and salads and string beans with almonds. And it's, it's going to be a wonderful, healthy dinner. And we're going to have communion. We're going to, we're going to acknowledge the presence of God. We're going to celebrate. We're going to pray. We're going to worship. It's going to be beautiful. Amen. So... This is something here we read in Acts 27. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, amen, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the tomorrow, and he continued his preaching until midnight. <laughs> in that same chapter, oh, he was an incredible thing. Somebody, I think, fell out of the you know, a, a third story loft or something came down and, 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 he, and he died. And, and the apostle Paul put his body upon this young man and he came back to life. He raised the dead right in the church service. It was so, so beautiful, so powerful. Psalm 107, 37, or no, Psalm 105, 37. This is really an important point here that I, I want to bring out. He brought them forth. This is referring now to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt with the spoils of Egypt. And they came out with silver and gold. And it says here in this Psalm, Psalm 105, it says here that there was not one feeble person among all their tribes. Not one was sick. Not one was sick. Think about that. Under the old covenant, the blood of a lamb, which was used to make an atonement for the sin of the people, how much more under the new covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, should this be true? 
I believe God wants us to be well, guys. I believe it's such the will of God that healing and miracles should be the norm in our lives. I believe it with all my heart, and I'm believing for healing and for miracles like we've never seen before. Yes, as we go into this Thanksgiving season, we're going to overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony because we're going to praise God. We're going to declare his greatness every time we get together. Every time. I mean, some great things have happened. We have somebody in our church, and, and, and I'll let this brother uh, express this maybe on Sunday morning, and I'm sure he will, but this was so important. He was in the hospital, and he had some blood work done, which, in, which indicated that he had blood clots in his lungs. Blood clots in the lungs is pretty serious. It blocks the the blood flow to the right side of the heart. It, it was really pretty serious matter. But then when he got down to the to the um, CAT scan, which shows abnormalities in the lungs, okay, the blood clots were gone. That was incredible. I, I made this testimony this morning and, and everyone just applauded. I mean, I mean, have God instantaneously. I know blood clots eventually saturate back into your body. I realized that. But no, this was an instantaneous thing. Literally, it was like a next day. Blood work was on one day. The next day, the CAT scan and the blood clots were gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I'm just so excited about this. And, and you know, I mean, if... if there was not a feeble one in all the tribes. I mean, it says there was a million and a half people left Egypt. A million and a half. That didn't include the women and children. That was only the men. The men were counted a million and a half. I believe there was probably every bit of, of, of three plus million people in that group. And, and, and if there was not one that was sick. Not even a dog could bark against them that night when they left Egypt. Not even a dog would bark against them. You talk about the favor and power of God. If this was true under the old covenant, how much more under the new covenant? We're talking about embracing the power that is represented in the Holy Communion. Amen. Holy Communion is the ordinance that Christ set up. He said, do this to remember what I did on the cross forever until I come again. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here's a passage here that I want to go over quickly here, but this is really important in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Like I said, as we started this study day, we're going to study the Bible. And there is nothing more that could be more precious and more important and more powerful and more life-changing and more challenging than studying the Word of God. Oh, there's lots of other things and books and different studies and academia and prophetic words and all of which are wonderful, but nothing, I mean, nothing comes close to understanding the Word of God. That trumps everything. The Bible, amen. So in 1 Corinthians 11, let's look at some scriptures. Verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as oft as ye drink it to remember me amen verse number 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye proclaim the lord's death until he comes let me just say something here god almighty lives in the eternal realm he's transcendent he's transcendent he's beyond time and space you know, we're, we're looking back in a linear timeline and we look back and we say Christ lived on earth about 2,000 years ago. Well, that's in our mind because we have, we're, we're, we're in time and space. We're in the realm of time and space. It's where we live. It's where our bodies exist. 
although I do believe that we can access the eternal realm in the spiritual sense. But I just want you to focus on this just for a moment. Okay, now this is really important to understand. God lives in this eternal realm. So to him, what Christ did on the cross is fresh. It's like Christ just died today for you so that you could be saved, so that you could be healed, so that you could be set free, so that you could be encouraged and strengthened. Christ's blood is just as fresh in the sight of Father God. It was just as, effic just as efficacious now as it was then. Why? Because there is no time in the realm of the eternal. God is the transcendent God, and he's beyond the physical, beyond time and space. Amen. This is so beautiful, so it's fresh all the time. In the sight of Father God, for as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. How do we do this in an unworthy manner? It's when we doubt. It's when we refuse to believe. It's when we, we have faith issues and love issues. I call them love deficiencies. If I have a faith issue, it's because I have a love deficiency, amen. It's so important to understand this. What would make us do this unworthy if we are coming to God in faith? And even if we were the, the most grotesque of sinners, if we were coming to partake of Holy Communion in faith in what Christ did on the cross, there is no way that, that we will get anything but blessed and saved and healed and delivered. Amen. There is no way, even if you come to him with, with sin and, and, and say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to be cleansed. I'm coming to be set free. I have faith in what you did. That's what it means to come unworthily when you come refusing to accept, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That's what would be coming unworthily, coming in an unworthy manner to partake of communion. But let a man examine himself, and this is so important. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. We've got to discern the Lord's body. I'm telling you, the cross was not just an event in history. It was the event. Amen. And I heard it put this way one time that, that you know, when the sheep were brought to the high priest and for offerings for an atonement for sin. They were never tortured. They were just killed in a humane way. And, uh, and, and, and without a doubt, they were brought and, and, you know, and, and as an offering to Father God, as a sacrif sacrificial offering. Amen. The soul that sins shall surely die, but God accepted a sacrifice and something in the place of our own life. And that was done by the blood of the lamb. Amen. So he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning what really happened on the cross. Amen. Not discerning the Lord's body. And that's how that can happen. For this reason, many are sick and weak and many fall asleep before the time or die prematurely. Amen. Uh, this is right in scripture. That's the 30th verse of of, of uh, of uh, 1 Corinthians 11, the 11th chapter. For this reason, many are weak and sick, uh, sickly among you, and many sleep or die before the time. And uh, that, that's really something to think about because, you know, we've got to come to him in faith. We've got to come in, to him in confidence and, and having perfect peace in the soul, knowing that Christ was faithful and what he did was so precious and so much in love and so full of grace. Amen. Grace is the best word that I can think of right there. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. So I just wanted to make sure that we touch on those verses there in Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. Sometimes they have been misunderstood. I believe with all my heart, if you come to Christ, no matter what you have done, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter because the blood and the grace of God is greater than any sin that I could commit. 
any sin, everything, any sin that I could have committed is, is, is covered, is, is, is dealt with, if you will, by what Christ did on the cross. Amen. No exceptions. God's grace is greater than my sin. Amen. You know, if we discern the Lord's body correctly, instead of weak, we become strong. <laughs> instead of be, being sick, we become healthy. Instead of falling asleep before the time, we live long. Amen. And I believe that with all my heart. That's the promises in the Word of God. There have been many testimonies that partaking of the Holy Communion, exercising faith in the broken body of Christ has proven to be what God honors in healing. And I want to place a real big emphasis today in this teaching on the healing power that's in the broken body of Christ. I believe there is healing in the communion. When you partake of communion, I believe with all my heart that we can declare healing in our bodies. Amen. I'm talking about instantaneous healing in some cases. Sometimes it's an instantaneous thing. Other times it's not. God takes us on a journey and there's a process involved. Either way, God gets the glory and it's all good. Amen. Holy communion is not something we do. It's not a legalistic thing. It's something we receive. It's something that God has already instituted through the Messiah, through Jesus himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, where the blood has been shed and the power has been just already established and, and brought before Father God. We, I believe with all of our heart, God wants us to be in health and prosper even as our soul prospers. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it's not something we do. It's not legalistic. It's not something in that realm at all. It's something that we receive, amen, from God. And that's important to understand. God's ways are so simple and so powerful, amen. And what Father God requires of us has already been accomplished. It's already done by Christ himself. And that is what we see when we engage in the Holy Communion, without a doubt. Sometimes healing is instantaneous, like I said before, and we all like it to be instantaneous and spectacular in that regard. But then other times, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a process. And uh, God knows exactly where we are in our relationship with him in our spiritual growth. And sometimes we need to go on a journey with him. Sometimes the process is what we need more than anything else. And God knows that. And it's all good. It's all good, believe me. And God's gonna work it all together for good. This is really interesting. You know, man ate his way into the great fall. And we know that. God said, don't eat of that tree. Here's the tree of life. There were two trees in the garden. There was the tree of life representing Christ, of course, and the life that God had offered to man at the very beginning. And then, of course, the tree which represented the knowledge of good and evil. And, uh, and God wanted to protect man from even having anything to do with that. And, of course, Satan deceived mankind, and they did eat. Well, Father God is now providing us a way out of the curse, amen. <clears throat> Christ came to be the second Adam, if you will, and to provide a way out of this curse and into great victory simply by eating, once again, or partaking, if you will, of the Holy Communion. And uh, to take these elements into our holy body. I mean, God is so cool. I mean, what an incredible plan that God has here. Amen. Isn't it beautiful? Holy communion is God's love language, man. This is the way he says, I love you. <sighs> Jesus loves you so much. It's just revelation. You got to get revelation. I, I could tell you about it all day. But unless you get revelation on how much he really loves you, you're not gonna fully get it, amen. It's an eternal method designed by Jesus himself, the Holy Communion I'm talking about, to remind us of his love for us, amen, amen. Partaking of Holy Communion is the way out of sickness, is the way out of depression, 
It's the way out of death. Amen. Holy communion is Christ's own direction as he taught at the Lord's Supper on that Thursday night right before his passion. That was an incredible Thursday night and they all sat around celebrating the Passover and then Jesus instituted this incredible ordinance of the church, which he said we should celebrate forever. The Lord Jesus already bore our sickness and depression and death on the cross. And that's what the Holy Communion represents. And that's why we want to embrace the power that's in it. Amen. So the way to partake unworthily is, is when we don't, you know, we refuse to believe. We, we just keep on doubting and keep on rejecting the message of the cross, the message of salvation. Do you know people that just continue to reject, continue to say no? It's hard, it's hard for me to process how somebody would say no to eternal life. How somebody would say no to that kind of love. How somebody would say, no, I don't believe it. I don't want it. I don't accept it. I can make it on my own. And we all know that we can. We all know that we can. There's no way that we can do this without his help. Amen. The communion in the new covenant is in his blood. Our sins have been remitted. Amen. So no more guilt. And this is what honors him when we partake of worthily. We understand that there is no guilt. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. So when we partake, okay, we can come with confidence. Now we need to confess something as we partake of communion. By your stripes, I am healed from these headaches. By your stripes, I am healed from hypertension. By your stripes, I am healed in my eyes. Amen. By your stripes, I am healed in my coronary system. By your stripes, all my arteries are clear. By your stripes, I have clear and clean lungs. By your stripes, I don't have diabetes anymore. By your stripes, you just start declaring by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. <laughs> I don't want to apologize the way I teach and preach. I, I, I just get very passionate about so many subjects of the Bible when I teach the Bible. And to me, it's, it's so beautiful and so powerful and so wonderful. And I just want to make sure that I share it with you. Amen. I love you so much. You know I do. I'm just a passionate preacher and I, I just enjoy the power of this word, especially when it comes to the healing of the body. All of us want good health, amen. And that's a big focus that we have here today. You know, we should be, you know, when we come to him to partake of communion, it's, it's really important that we focus on his stripes, focus on what he did, the blood that he shed, not our sickness, not our depression, amen. Stop confessing your sickness. Stop doing that. Stop agreeing with the devil. Don't do that. Start today to agree with the word of God. Don't, don't agree with the enemy when he says, you have this oppression or you have this disease. Then if you say, yeah, that's mine, and you start confessing it, then it's yours. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So whatever we speak is what we get. God says that we can have whatever we speak but yet we continue to just speak what we have the lord wants to set us free from that amen he wants us to get in agreement with the word of god even though it's a challenge sometimes in our soul amen when we hold the cup of blessing and we celebrate uh, the Lord's death until he comes again. Now we receive from him and we get revelation like we talked about last week. And that's, that's a beautiful and a powerful thing. Finally, we know that Jesus has joy when we partake. You know, joy is the most precious commodity in heaven. There's nothing for the joy that was set before him. Christ endured the cross. He endured the cross. He despised the shame because he was so looking forward to the joy. Heaven, yes, for any salvation, there's lots of joy. 
says, in fact, in one part of Scripture where it says that even if only one person gets saved, all of heaven parties, all of heaven gets excited. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But I believe if you just partake of communion and, and you get even a healing, even if it's something that seems insignificant or even just a bit of revelation, I believe Jesus gets just as excited for you when you enjoy it at that level. Amen? I do believe that with all my heart. Jesus loves you so much and so wants for you to get this incredible revelation of healing and, and power that is in the celebration of the Lord's Supper, and uh, which is a celebration of his death and his resurrection and his life. And, uh, and I, I just wanted to share this with all of you today and anybody that's watching this video to embrace the power that is so associated with this. Amen. And I just want to end up today by saying something that is really from the Lord's model prayer. And he said, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Lord, I love you. I love you so much. God, there's maybe some watching this video right now that says, boy, that sounds so wonderful. But I don't even know Jesus. I've never even met him. Or maybe I've been, maybe I've grown up in church and really never had much of a relationship. Never talked to him. Never prayed that much. Never read the Bible. Never had that much interest in church. Never seemed to have the time to get out and attend services and come together with the body of Christ. Lord, right now, I pray for that soul. I pray, Father, that you will touch that person right now, that man, that woman, that mom, that dad, that grandma or grandpa, that aunt or uncle, that son or daughter, whoever it may be, that's wrestling with this whole relationship with Jesus. God, draw them to you right now. Why don't you pray with me? Will you do that? Just set down what you have in your hand and sit down in that chair that's near you or kneel or whatever you want to do. And just take a minute to pray with me. Would you do that? Let's do that. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I love you. And what Pastor Steve has been sharing today about the incredible power that's in the Holy Communion and all the good things that we can enjoy. I want a taste of that. I want to experience that. Please forgive me for my sin. Take it all away, Lord. I know you've already dealt with it on the cross. And I accept you as my Savior. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I, I just want Jesus in my life. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You have really taken a giant step on this incredible journey with Jesus. Amen. I'm just so excited for you right now because we have celebrated today the miraculous power of the Holy Communion. And we want to, we're making a choice to embrace the power that's in it. Amen. I'm so glad I've had an opportunity to share this with you today. And I trust that you will share this YouTube link with somebody that you love, somebody that needs to hear this, needs to be blessed, just like you are. And they need to understand the joy of the Lord, understand the love of God, understand the power that we can enjoy in healing of our bodies as well. God wants to heal your body. He wants, to have, he wants you to have good health, give you divine health in Jesus' name. So be blessed now. Good night. And we'll see you on the weekend. All right? And uh, have a good night.